Hey everybody, welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and disembodied hands, Quindy, Justin, and John, and this tiny puppy who's currently looking at me going, I kept you up all night, Mom. So yeah, it's going to be one of those days, folks. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. Hi everybody. <laughs> I just want to roll over on my back and go to sleep. <laughs> oh, dear me. Ah, oh, that's having a new baby. It's having a baby. Ask Justin. He knows. He knows. So, yeah. So yeah. Yep. It's just, it's just getting, we're adjusting. We're adjusting. So, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. I just feel like all my brain cells have been sucked out because when she's out, I have to be, like, on her because she's got, uh, she's got a lot of energy because she's a baby and she wants to be playing all the time and she's still learning what's allowed and what's not allowed. Although she's really good to she, responding to the, ah, uh -uh, if, like, she's doing something that's not good. Oh, right now she has her little paw hooked over her pen, and she is resting her little face on the on the mesh. Hi, pupper. Yeah, you're good. You're a good girl. Yes. Okay, you can settle. <laughs> She's a silly goof. It is. I. Uh, it's something, Valandar. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> but yeah, thanks everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's learning how to dog. Exactly. She's learning our our, uh, you know, our house and our rules and uh, everything. Um, she's uh, possibly housebreaking herself a little bit too effectively. <laughs> I was like, we're going to use this potty pad idea that Bridget gave me. And then she's like, no, I'd rather be taken out in the middle of the night because I don't want to go indoors. And I'm like, all right, this is good, but <laughs> I was really hoping not to take you out for the first couple of weeks, puppy. Uh, being a puppy is very hard. It's very hard. Yes, it is. It is very hard. I'll use my puppy voice, dear. Yes. She's a cutie. As David said, he's, he finally understands. He's like, now I understand when you say, like, it's good that she's cute or we've killed her. And I'm like, yes, this is what people say about babies, too. Except I think puppies are cuter than babies. They need more protection because they have teeth. <laughs> Hey, 37 months for Kuriniko. Thank you. Yeah. So today I was just like, I was, I'm trying to get a whole bunch of models ready for ReaperCon. And I wanted to send the Wyvern um, to ReaperCon so that he could go in the Reaper uh, gallery. But I realized I'd rather um, put him on a base. He's a little bit overhang as far as this base goes, but I don't want to put him on a bigger one. Uh, so I'm thinking... What I'm going to do is use some of our lovely cork and build up a base quickly that's ragged and goes all around the edges. So it's not just that his integral base is just kind of sticking off, but essentially using this to create a, a crumbly edge all around so it looks like it's meant to be that way and uh, it works. I know. Oh, Lizanna. I am with you, fist bump, baby. Um, yeah, we. I. I. Uh, I did a litter evaluation like last weekend, like ten days ago, and uh, and I drove her home, eighteen hundred miles. And ever since then, I've I've I pretty much been exhausted for like a week and a half straight. <laughs> yes, fist bump. <laughs> So, and she's a sweetie, and, and now she, she actually, the, the best thing is that we're getting her down uh, on a schedule now. And she's actually, when she's tired, she's actually really good about going into her crate. Like, we've got, I've got a pen for her here in my um, streaming room, and she's really good about going into it and settling for the stream. Um, and in the afternoon in our main room. So she's actually, like, really, really good about the crate, and that does save my brain cells at least a little bit during the day. But yeah, they have so much energy. Like they're 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 just they're babies. <laughs> I mean, the advantage is you get to train them from the ground up. The downside is you have to train them from the ground up. <laughs> so I'm gonna do. I might use some static grass clumps today. I like these dark ones, guys, because uh, I like to paint my static grass. And if I start with a dark color, then dry brushing this in any color I want is really uh, really good really easy uh it's easy to get if you i think these are the swamp tufts no wasteland tuft so oh actually pretty good twisted oma um i essentially while the the puppy had kind of a routine in the morning where she would get up and play and eat and then she would sleep a little bit and then we would play again and then we would get on the road it was kind of the routine she, that she had at her breeders so while she was down for that first little nap i would get my exercises in um, I did end up taking a muscle, half of a muscle relaxer every night 
but it actually, um, that and uh, back pillow support, like the one that I use here in the office, uh, actually kept me going. Like, I definitely needed to do some serious stretches when I got home, like just to get everything re in, you know, recombobulated. Um, but I, I was able to at least survive. I can actually do it. Like if I had to do a four day road trip, I could do it. Um, so that's good to know because if I want to take her somewhere, like if we decide to drive back, drive home to Seattle, um, for the holidays and bring her with us, then, uh, yeah, like I'll be able to do it. So that's really good. So the first thing I want to do, and this time, since I do want this to overhang, remember the last time we did this, I kind of used the base and I traced around it, but I knew that I wanted it a little smaller. Here we do want it to overhang here and there around the edges. So I am actually going to trace it this way instead. I may just do it that way. Just kind of let it overlap like that. And I'm going to grab my pen. But yeah, um, so tonight, guys, I go to Puppy Orientation. Uh, this is the one I go to without the puppy. So they're going to talk to us about their training methods and just prepare us for what we need to bring and what we can expect when we come to our first puppy training session. Um, and they're going to have, you know, I have to um, give them my shot records and all that kind of thing. And, um, and yeah, so we are going to set up to take our first ever puppy preschool class, which is exciting. Let me get my glasses on here. Now it's not important, obviously, um, for me to be real precise here on how I cut out this base. So if I really want to, probably the way to do it and the way to be less work is to grab one of my spade sculpting tools, which as you all know, I really like to use for this sort of thing. And uh, just kind of claw away at it. So we've got our, yeah, puppy preschool. Yeah, I found a really good training facility. They're about 20 minutes away from us. Um, it's, a, it's actually a franchise that I had encountered in Texas that I'd always heard good things about and been interested in pursuing. Um, but I had just, uh, I had four dogs and no time and no brain cells. So now, now that I have, you know, relatively, like I can make time and I have two brain cells left um, and I have one dog, I can do it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, I'm going to actually cut, pre-cut just a little bit, I decided. So one way that you can work with cork that's pretty cool is do just a rough cut. Like you don't have to go all the way down. And I'm not like being very precise on this. I don't need it to be precise. It's more that I just don't want to waste a bunch of cork. There we go. So once you've got it, and I did it maybe about um, halfway down to, to three quarters of the way down. Once you've got that, you can begin to pull it. You see that it separates naturally once you do that. And you can just break it really easily. So this is really thin cork that you can get for coasters. Um, and you're making your own coasters. You can find this stuff at Hobby Lobby and Michael's usually. If not, you can find it online. This one is quarter inch thick, I believe. I guess if I had a ruler down here. I don't know if my ruler got ran away or if it's still down here. Every once in a while, David steals it to measure things, and then I'm like, where did my effing ruler go? Yeah, I have no idea where I went. Oh, puppy. It's so hard being a human. <laughs> All right, so I want to capitalize on some of this stuff and get rid of others. So let's, uh, let's just take that part off there. I want a chunky bottom that really looks like rock. And I want to really um, mess up this top part. And I really want to look at where my wyvern's going to sit. And what we'll do, guys, is we will be looking at the base here. And I realize that, hey, I've got a really good um, area here. I can have, I can work the cork kind of into that. And I can, I can fit the bottom of this right about there. And then I can kind of rip up the rest of it around. So we're going to actually glue the wyvern to this and then we're going to work around it because we're doing kind of a fast thing. I think I'm going to move it just a little bit back because I want to be able to really pull away the cork and make it kind of um, bevel. So let me grab, let me move these little cork rocks out of the way here. I'm going to grab my super glue because we're going, this is a fast basing today. But yeah, guys, I want to let you know also, I will not be on tomorrow. I forgot, um, Reapercon dis disrupts all plans, and uh, I have to take David to the airport tomorrow so that he can get to Reapercon. 
And that's, uh, I have to get him over there. I have to leave around 10 a.m., of course. So it's like, you know, never convenient. Um, all right. So now we're going to face that and put it there and squoosh. So I mentioned this before, but when you super glue things to cork, the cork gets brittle. It does work. It's probably not the best adhesive for this. PV, PVA glue or uh, Elmer's all-purpose uh, glue, any any white glue meant for crafting. Wood glue is also decent. Um, all those things work well for cork. But that will at least get us kind of stuck down. And then I can take my tool and I can continue to essentially claw away, leaving some of this stuff projecting, because I do want it to fill the base. And so I'm gonna start by just clawing away a lot of it, and then we're going to put it over the base, and we're gonna see if we can shake it, shape it a little bit more. I, it gets really brittle, I, and it's really hard, Valandar. So I don't know that you could take advantage of that, maybe. I find it very hard to work with once it's super glue soaked, very hard to work with, because it, it really gets kind of rock solid and brittle. I mean, I, I personally like have no problem disguising cork to look less like cork. I, I think the really the way to do it is is less about like finding different ways to break it and really just working on making it look more natural and disguising the fact that it's all one level by using other basing materials or um, clawing away at it with uh, with your tools and putting um, you know building up basing materials and grass and other vegetation. I, I find that I mean most of our other bases that we've done with cork I think it's it's um it's not too hard you could try to break it with if you want to try the super glue thing though I just I've I find it harder to work with not easier so the problem with having the women on here is that I need to have it pressed down and so it's hard to show you guys let me see if I can do this and I want to get it about this focal point so let me see if I can zoom in there we're in focus so what I'm going to be doing is pressing down and ripping. I can't do that too hard here. I may have put my thumb under it. There we go. And I'm going to be leaving some shelf as well so that I can use but basing materials like sand and gravel to build up onto this uh, wyvern base and integrate it, which will also help to stick the wyvern base further into the, uh, again, or, or stick it better onto the cork. Yes, yes, uh, Julie's really cool at putting the, yeah, putting the cool details on the bases there. This is a cool model. Okay, I'm going to put it down for a second, rip it away and show you guys what you, what I'm doing here. I just need to get, I need to have it way down here so that I can be more precise with my tool and press down really hard. So I'm going in and I'm essentially making a valley here. So see how I'm taking that making a little canyon, keeping a little bit of this overhang, keeping a little bit of that. I'm going to probably, remember I want this to overhang the edge a little bit just so that it's consistent. And then once I've got it where I think I've got it, I'm going to actually rip away the bottom a little bit so that it looks more like an overhanging stone. I'm going to leave this big piece of cork and kind of rip away the stuff around it. So we've got a big solid chunk of cork in there. Another way to disguise the fact that it's cork is to take bigger pieces of cork and kind of uh, set them up to disguise your edge. So like we could put this clump of cork and we could line it up with the clump under it. And essentially if you glue those together and kind of rip out a little bit of the cork here, you can disguise the fact that it's, you can make it look multi-layer. But you can disguise that that is cork. You can see it kind of sits there. But yeah, so that's one way to do it as well, and I may do that. Um, using green stuff to sculpt over the top is another great way to disguise cork, especially if you've got things like this fallen statue here, um, and you want to kind of give a, a different, uh, this kind of texture to your cork. Um, green stuff or sculpting pastes are a good way to do that. I'm going to pull this out. So we're creating a jagged, rocky, you can see how that comes around. Jagged, rocky overhang. 
for Mr. Wimmern. And I definitely, you definitely want to vary. You don't want to just do an even edge around here. We want it to look cool and natural and craggy. Um, and so I'm definitely trying to vary where my edge, how far, it, how far in my edge goes, um, you know, how, how narrow, I mean, keeping narrow parts and wide parts. Um, hey, Zachariah, how's it going? Um, we are putting together a simple base for the Wyvern because Ron prefers that when I hand models into him, um, they be on a plastic base. So the Wyvern is getting uh, kind of a quick uh, cork architecture, just a craggy rock base around the bottoms of the statue, and then we're going to blend it in. So I kind of like how that is overhanging right there right now. That's a, that's a pretty good... We want it to be very intentional. We want to show that, yes, we are meaning for all of this to be overhanging. Which will disguise the fact that normally the Wyvern's uh, tail base part there would hang over. We're essentially just doubling down on doing the overhang is what we're doing. But yeah, this uh, now that it's been a whole year, I am, let's just do a narrow crack here. So use the edge of your sculpting tool and you can make cracks. You can also do this with um, with the hobby knife, but I find that uh, often the the sculpting tool being more more blunt will give me a cooler, more randomized um, texture. But if you want super thin, more regular cracks, then use your hobby knife. It'll it'll give you a better effect. My cork will go everywhere. And then I want to crack that away a little bit here. But yeah, so getting some irregularity. Any any like recesses that I can carve in will help to disguise the corkiness of it. And then I'm using um, cork and debris to and gravel to build up um, an irregular surface here. For this, I use metal. But um, I use a mixture of silicone and metal tools when I do sculpting. The, you want the, um, a set of metal tools is very good. I use these a lot, but I also use the extra firm with clay shapers. I think I, I use both and I believe that's my best um, option. So there are some things that I absolutely depend on the clay shapers for. Always get the extra firm, size zero. Uh, there's usually a set of them online you can find. And then I got, I have, I have several, I picked up several sculpting tools over the years, but the most expensive, or the, sorry, the most um, useful shapes are probably my, my tapered spade, my proper spade, and big spoon. Big spoon's good for flattening stuff down. Those are probably the ones I use the most. And then Tiny Spoon. But Tiny Spoon is not commercially available unless you find one. You might have to make one. He's brass rod and he's a Tiny Spoon. Um, I mean, I would honestly pick up the Extra Firm Zero Clay Shapers. I mean, okay, if you're just starting out and you haven't done anything, get the metal ones. Uh, what the Clay Shapers are good for is smoothing, though. And if you, if you can just get a taper point, which is the round rolly one, this one, then this is the one I use more than any other clay shaper. But I don't think you can unless maybe you go to an art store, maybe you can buy singles. Otherwise, I've only ever seen these in a set. You could probably, um, Patrick Keith on his um, bombshell site used to sell the Wax 5 sculpting tool, which is not one that I typically reach for but it is a single metal tool that a lot of sculptors use i wonder if i i thought i had one here in my drawer let me see if i do i know i had one i just don't know where it went i've moved since then but i thought i had kept it in here hmm no luck but sometimes you can get a single sculpting tool and uh it'll have a couple of different types of ends and that then you could cut down on your investment that way Yes, I will need, I will not be on tomorrow. I am taking uh, David to the airport to catch his plane to ReaperCon, and I have to do that in the morning. So, 
Oh, yay! Bye, Kitty Go. Have fun with uh, wrangling the kitties. But yeah, they do very different things. Like I use the metal tools for everything except for smoothing putty, and even then, um, I use tiny spoon to smooth sometimes because I need something if I need something very small. Um, so I use the big metal spoon to flatten down the green. Then I'll use the clay shaper to kind of roll over it and really blend it into the surrounding areas. Now we have a very, there we go. But yeah, so I have things to do. ReaperCon disruption, you know how it goes. I'm gonna go down here and just rip off some more of this. I'll show you guys how it looks. I think I wanna get a really rough edge here. Remember that we want this to be irregular. So we really want to have parts sticking out and parts not sticking out. We always want to kind of put it on our base and see how much more we want to take off. So, so when I look at this, and I'm doing this continually as I'm uh, developing it. So I'm looking at this edge and I like, I like this edge and how it's uh, protruding so far. Um, gives the wyvern, the nice other, other nice thing about this cork is that it gives the wyvern a little more height, right? He's very crouched and so this allows you to kind of see under him a little bit better. Yeah, no problem, Kodiak. They're, it's not the breed for everybody and it, they are a lot of work, as you can see from my bags under my eyes right now. Um, but uh, no problem. I always like to talk about the Shadow Shepherds. I mean, I've been involved with the breed for quite a while at this point. And I have a very uh, strong um, hand in their uh, their healthy development for the future. So they are in general pretty healthy dogs. That's one of the nice things about having a very tightly managed breed. But yeah, they do require a lot of socialization and work. All right, so we're gonna get this around here. I'm gonna leave that jutting out. I kind of like it. Um, yeah, hi, hi, Roger. How's it going? Um, do, 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 do. I'm going to pop that down. So as I hold this up, I want to make sure that I'm getting it. I don't want anything sticking out too far unless it's intentional. I don't mind having this spur sticking out toward the front because I think it draws an in, uh, interest to the statue's face down here, which is a nice detail. I don't want it to... Uh, I don't want it to overwhelm anything, so I don't want to make a huge, like, heavy thing, but having this spur down here does draw your eye, and then you see the face. So that's part of why I'm keeping this um, this part protruding more than the rest. But now I'm going to hold this in place, kind of, like, make sure that I've got it lined up roughly the way I want it. I can always use some putty to fill gaps here, or some modeling paste, or texture paste, if I see a little gap at the end. Um, so I've got that, got that, got that. So now I can rip out a bunch of stuff back here. And really, you just want to just rip it, just like that. And if you can leave these big chunks, that's these are really useful because they can become additional rocks. Um, you can essentially just make them additional debris to help blend in your base. Remember, I'm also pulling away at the bottom of each of these because I want an irregular kind of craggy stone thing. So I definitely want to re reduce the flatness of the bottom edge if I can, wherever I'm working. I just saw some kind of great rock formations when I was driving through Yellowstone. I kind of was trying to figure out how I can do a base integrating something like that, but it's like, I need a big base. <laughs> They have these, uh, there's just these rock spires that are pretty cool coming out of the sides of cliffs. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there. This is a very fast way to build up a base and to get a kind of a, a cool natural effect. And it's always a little different. Um, you can make it that way intentionally by um, following the cork shapes. So like there, I kind of like pulled out the cork, just I followed this crack between the uh, pieces of cork. Oh, I assumed somebody was being a jerk. I'm glad I missed it. that out of there. 
Alrighty. Yep, Troll's gonna troll, for sure. So yeah, I hope everybody's excited for ReaperCon. Um, I was, uh, I, I got my model prepped for the stream. We voted yesterday on what to do. Um, and we were gonna, we are going to be working on this lady on Thursday. I kind of have ideas. Um, on how to paint her, but yeah, she's super crisp. Like this is such a super crisp sculpt, and you should all pick it up at ReaperCon. Oh, it was a good choice by the chat, Crowley. Uh, I had the chat vote on it, and they they also could have chosen the Dragon Bust, but they chose not to. They chose um, the Ghost Walker Lady. So yay! So all right, so now I've got uh, a little bit of where you can see I'm maybe hanging over just a little bit too much, maybe along this side or that side, or I have to reduce both. Um, I think I'm going to reduce this side. I kind of like, kind of like this side. I like how irregular I'm making it and I can pull apart this a little bit. I'm using the, just the tip of the sculpting tool when I want to pull apart more precisely. So that's why I like to use the spade is because I've got this sharp tip, relatively sharp. It's not going to do anything to your hand, but it's, it'll do, do good stuff to cork. So. I can be more fine with my work when I'm using that, just that edge to pull away the cork. All right, so yeah, I like that a little better. So I'm gonna kind of pin, pin that down on the base and now I need to adjust the edge on this side and really cut it in more. Yeah, we voted yesterday I, um, I'm unboxed. I got my Reaper swag boxes yesterday and I did an unboxing on them. Um, and there were a lot of models in there that I want to paint on stream because they're just really good looking. So you guys will probably see a lot of those popping up after ReaperCon. So now I need to really chunk away at this side. Take a lot of this stuff out. And I want a lot off of the under the wing. So I may actually tackle it from the other side just to get these big chunks, big chunks off. It's a little easier. I could also do a knife score and just pull it away if I want to really uh, get rid of some of it. I might do that. Let me, uh, let me size this on the base. Yeah, it's not like you're not gonna see the other ones painted. They'll all get, they'll all get used. If Reaper's going to give me a free swag box, I'm going to use it. Let's see here. I want that part there, this part there. That's about right. Yeah, I need to take a lot of that off. So a whole bunch of this. So let's do that. Let's actually score with a knife. We may have to kind of get our kind of guesstimate, but that's all right. Just take a chance. I'm going to start here. I'm going to just score. Now you can use just your hobby knife to pull away your cork as well. You do not need to use a spade sculpting tool. I just like the sculpting tool because it's a little less precise. Sometimes I want less precision. I want more of an organic feel. The knife is just going to cut through. It's going to make a sharp edge that's very evident, whereas, you know, it's going to, and it's going to leave marks like that because it is so sharp. It's going to cut the cork. It's going to interfere with the various uh, chunks of it. So it doesn't look as natural. So it's going to do like that. And it's, uh, it's kind of flat and regular. So that isn't necessarily what I want. So that's why I'm using the sculpting tool to rip, us, rip apart the cork instead. Just super glue uh, twist on You have to be careful because it makes the cork more brittle, but it is the fast attach. Uh, the Wyvern had a good amount of attached space on the bottom of its base, so it made sense to me to use the super glue to set it up. I do not want to use any really time-consuming products on the stream this morning. I wanted to kind of show how fast you can throw these together. And yeah, I'm just at this point, I'm down to the whole whatever gets done goes to ReaperCon, whatever doesn't get done, you know, doesn't go to ReaperCon and waits till next year. Oh, a new tool coming. Ooh, hey, Raceland, thanks for the sub. 
Thank you for the tier one. And welcome. Welcome to the stream. I'm Anne. I work for Reaper Miniatures. Normally I'm more awake than this, but I just got a new puppy and she's killing me. <laughs> I kill my sleep schedule anyway. Um, yay. Uh, not. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, today I'm just working on stuff that I want to finish uh, so I can send to Reaper uh, for the gallery. So a lot of these models, this Wyvern we painted a while ago on the stream, um, we did kind of a tiger pattern. You actually, Quindy, do we have a, a first video for the Wyvern? Could you have a, do you have a link somewhere or a playlist for the Wyvern? So if you want to go back and watch how we did the patterns and the cool, like, just the, chose the colors and uh, did all the cool detailing, then uh, you can go and take a look at that. But yeah, we do a six model rotation recently, so we're always working day by day. We're working on different stuff. Um, I always have this stream. This this week is an exception because ReaperCon starts. Uh, tomorrow I have to take my uh, my fiance to the airport and he's a uh, he's teaching at ReaperCon. Um, and then Thursday I will be doing the opening stream of ReaperCon from 10.30 USA Central Time to 12.30 USA Central Time. Uh, we'll hope the puppy stays asleep through all that. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I'm not mad. I'm just so tired. <laughs> Thank you, Quindy. Yeah, it may probably make sense to drop a link to the Wyvern um, streams in the chat since. Uh, there we go. Since we're working on the Wyvern, I have a little. There's a little piece of fiber that got sunk into this cork. I'm kind of trying to get it out. If I can't get it out, I'm going to just cut it. But first, I'm going to see if I just need to chunk away at that. Let me position my wyvern. Oh, we're doing pretty well here, actually. We're doing pretty well at getting the wyvern to fit on the base. Here, I'll show you. So now, if we look, we can just see a couple of chunks projecting. And as we center the wyvern on the base, this is going to project... That's going to project. I do need to rip away a little bit more at the back here, but overall I'm pretty happy with how this is coming along. Just throwing together a very quick uh, base to both raise up the wyvern in elevation and to, uh, because it would normally um, kind of overlap, because it's integral base or overlap this uh, black base that I'm choosing, um, I wanted to make it blend in better. Yeah, we've just got a fiber that's come stuck in the cork here. I'm going to grab a scissors and take that out. Pokey tool class prep. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah, I'm going to miss seeing you guys. Bob and Julie and everybody else who's going to the con. But I want to get the get the little pupper into a solid schedule so that uh, I can sleep. <laughs> of course not, Valandar. It's much more much more uh, simple for the cat to get the human servant to remove the uh, offending uh, item. <laughs> All right, actually, I like this. This is coming along pretty well. I like the overhang. I like the texture. Now I want to mess up the top of this cork because it's all very smooth, and I am going to be loading some gravel and stones onto it. But I can kind of help all of that uh, illusion by also doing some recessed areas and making the surface not flat. So it's just a little bit more work and you need to just dig away at the surface just kind of from the side because you don't want to put like a real deep hole through it. You just want to make it irregular take a little bit of cork out of it here and there. Make some divots in it. You can uh, connect your divots with your, uh, your, ed your crumbly edges here if you want. That can be fun. This is one way, um, if you were doing this and you were wanting to do some green stuffing, but you could utilize a piece of cork like this to create a base that had water channels on it. Um, I would probably do a multi-level cork and then I would dig out my water channels with my sculpting tool. And then I would use um, green stuff probably to just line the uh, each of the 
a thin sheet of green to just line each of the channels so that you could actually pour your water effects or resins or whatever you're going to do into it. Uh, make your pools and then use your water effects for any little falls and that would be pretty cool. So cork is uh, nice and modular that way. Of course, a lot of people do this with those wooden block bases, right? They use a Dremel, they, they drill out features so that they can uh, put different stuff in them, make the base more interesting and not just a wood block. Now I'm just gonna try to chunk away a few. I just wanna make a really irregular surface. Because one of your telltales, if you're talking about disguising cork, one of your telltales is, of course, the flatness of the surface. So any way that you can mess up that flatness and uh, fool the eye uh, is good. Oh, thanks, Quindy. Awesome. Quindy has fetched the start of the Wyvern. So if you want to watch the painting of the Wyvern, she's got that link in the chat. But yeah, I've got, we're starting a lot of new models after ReaperCon. We have some that we're continuing, one of which we also are doing base work on. Again, I wanted to, remember guys, I want to disguise this lower edge so it's not just a hard edge like this. I want to disguise it so that it looks more like rock. So I'm going to use just the tip of my sculpting tool to rip away little bits right there at that edge so it's not too regular. The more irregular you can make uh, your cork features, the more they will look natural. I mean, the trick to really natural looking bases is just more work. It's like, we all tend to start with the same kind of stuff, plaster, cork, um, foam core, you know, uh, styrene. You know, we start with balsa wood sometimes, you know, or bas basswood. We all start with the same materials, but it's just how much work you put in then to disguise those materials and uh, make, kind of fool the eye so that the, so that people have to act, if people have to actually ask you how you made the base, you win. That's it. And then, and then you can blow their minds by saying, oh, it's just cork with, you know, X, Y, Z and this and that. And it's the X, Y, Z, and the this and that that makes it, you know, not obviously gorg. So sometimes you can just like put in a little notch here. And pull that cork out of there. Again, work with the work with the natural bits. If you can see a piece of cork kind of hanging down, like this this little chunk right here, you can just rip that little chunk right out. And uh, that'll be a lot easier if you rip out the existing chunk. Go with the structure. It's going to be a lot easier and it's also going to look more natural. So we're chunking up the bottom of that edge pretty well. Anything to make it a little more odd. And of course, just like with the top, every once in a while you want to rip out a lot more, comparatively speaking, and sometimes you want to rip out just a little. So under the wing here is pretty flat, but it's also an area that not many people are going to be looking at. So I'll rip a little bit out. I need to double check on it, see how much I'm taking off though. So once again, always be checking back with your base, checking back and making sure that, yeah, okay, it fits. I'm not, you don't want to leave a lot of the gap here where you can see the, the lip there. So you don't want to leave a lot of that. A little bit uh, is fine because you're going to be able to fill that with either glue and gravel or modeling paste or, or texture paste or whatever. All right, so that is good. Let's see here if I scooch him a little bit that way, if I scooch him a little bit that way. That's pretty good, actually. I think I'm almost ready to glue him down. Touch base with your base. That's right. Always, always touch base with your base. So the back here is uh, a little bit, uh, still could use a little more work, but now is the time I think I will glue him down and then I will continue to work with my sculpting tools to make the base more integrated. I won't have to worry about the positioning because I'll have glued it down. So what I will do is um, probably going to do a bead right around the inside and pretty heavy bead. And I'm going to try to make it go up a little bit up onto the edge. So I've got that big, big bead of glue. Now it's going to take just a second to set once I pop this base down. Be careful, do not glue the base to your fingers. And I want to 
set it down. Got a tiny bit of time to scooch it. So I'm scooching it a little. I feel like that is well scooched. And what will happen now is, even though the center of this base, uh, because of the raised lip, it's not going to hit the, uh, you know, the interior where the glue was. But capillary action is pulling that glue up into the cork, and it's uh, pulling it up to the edge here. Now we may need to see some ghosting on the edge, which is when you see that um, that white uh, residue with super glue interacting with stuff, and then your base maybe goes a little white. But I've also got some scratch marks on the base, so I may end up painting the base black anyway. Of course, because you had to laugh at him, Vandalar. I get it. <laughs> Yeah, so that's doing pretty good. That's starting to set up. And as I set up, I'm kind of looking at it going, okay, what do I want to pull away? Because once I have this glue all set, and then I can really attack it with a sculpting tool. Like maybe I'll take out a whole chunk there, right? And maybe I'll take out some more chunks on the top here. Um, and then we'll start working with both the grit of our, and never throw this stuff out before you're done, guys. All these little cork bits, the grit from what we've been doing, these are useful. And it's as good as gravel. So I'll get the really fine stuff too. Some of it's fallen off of my paper. So let me grab it. There. So all of this stuff, minus the really big chunks, because you want to use those purposefully rather than randomly. But this is just as good as gravel to um, kind of use on the top. It, it makes a great broken rock impression. All right, I'm gonna take, I need hydration, need water, need technically needed double caffeine this morning, I think. All righty. Hmm, and I do have some moss over here that I may use for like li little desert plants and tendrils too, but first, this is setting up, yep, there's our ghosting. See how it's going a little white there at the edge? See, there you go. So you can paint, I, I was pretty much set that I was going to be painting this base anyway, as I mentioned, because my, my sculpting tool uh, stuff was making some nicks on the surface, but that's fine. So I'll paint the base black when I am all done, and then I'll put a layer of sealer over it, and it should be fine. You could technically also use a black primer, or, um, or just use a white primer and paint over it black, depending on what you want to do, it doesn't matter. Um, one thing that David pointed out to me the other day, which I actually... Uh, reminded myself to talk about uh, today is when you are doing when you're painting over a base normally I like to use a satin finish because it mimics this nice black plastic and I tend to like the look of the black plastic um, but if your base has a lot of big nicks in it or it's irregular in another way like maybe you, you had to kind of shave the edge a little bit or you 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 know for one way or another base base surface got compromised and it's marred then putting in the satin can be a mistake because then all of those scratches um, could essentially show up better if you have a slightly shiny surface. Now, if I put a layer of primer on this followed by a big thick layer of paint, I'm pretty sure I'm going to fill in those cracks pretty well. But keep in mind for that, and if you do have kind of a compromised base, um, keep in mind that putting a satin finish on it may not be a great uh, choice. So. I'll see how it looks after I put a nice thick layer. Yeah, we've got that white, is that frosty, frosty thing. Interaction with the super glue and the plastic. It's the way it goes. All right. But now it's nice and solid. And the other nice thing is that a lot of these uh, cork fragments, let's remove the biggest ones because they'll have big flat spaces that are evident. But if you've got some medium-sized ones that don't have a big flat area, then you can leave them in. But this is a nice kind of rubble. And it isn't that far off in appearance from the, the, the statue. So we could definitely use some of this sprinkled on. I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna move a lot of the big stuff off of there. Like some of the biggest pieces. They're pretty easy to separate out with a fingertip. Just kind of like, you know, roll them around and you'll you'll see the big ones and then you can pull them off until you're left with a nice uh, smaller pit bits. Yeah, this looks pretty good right here. So that's really a nice mixture of sizes. 
and stuff. So let's, uh, let's start doing a little bit of building up on this space. You could use gravel, sure, but you've already got this. It's free. <laughs> and again, um, though I'm working fast today, white glue is uh, often a much better choice for building up texture and uh, basing materials on cork. I'm going to get my super glue down and I'm going to use my sculpting tool to kind of resituate some of this stuff. I can always clean off my sculpting tool with a knife. And I'm just going to put some grit, put some nicely placed grit up there. And I'm going to continue working around. I'm going to actually put some of this right up against the statue because that's where it would go. Like, if you think about how debris would fall, it would definitely fall and uh, mound up against the base of the statue here. So we can shove some of our basing material right up under that and build it up right under her face. Uh, just super glue, Lizana, but uh, PB. Uh, PVA glue, just normal craft white glue, um, not obviously not school glue, not Elmer's school glue, but if you want to use Elmer's, the Elmer's all-purpose is the best um, for basing and terrain stuff, in my opinion. You can also use wood glue. I'm using super glue today because I'm trying to go fast, um, but super glue is, is a lot more unforgiving, obviously, because once it's on, it's on, and it's making your cork really brittle, too. Uh, and once it sets, it sets, like you're done, unless you want to take a knife and uh, carve it away. So I don't recommend it, but today, because I'm, I'm working so quickly, I'm working with super glue. So I want to nestle in some of that gravel so that it's just kind of, uh, sorry, the cork, so that it's building up under her nose there and uh, giving us the feeling of debris that has uh, crumbled off of her. Um, another great way to glue this down is again with white glue. You can use a thinned layer of white glue or wood glue to apply over the top of this. It'll fill in cracks. Gotta be careful because of course these will want to stick to your sculpting tool just as much as they want to stick to uh, the cork itself. In fact, a little bit better to your sculpting tool because the, the cork is absorbent. So we've got that kind of positioned where I want it. That's nice. And we've got some rocks and gravel. So that's going to help to disguise our, uh, our corkness. I'm going to claw away a little bit more of the top over here. Because again, I want to create... I want to get rid of as much of the flatness of the surface as I can. Since it's obviously unnatural. Now, this is another way you can, I mean, this works with ruins to leave a little bit of flat here and there, because having this statue here does imply that this was maybe a, a, a ruined palace or a ruined temple in the, in the first place. Um, yeah, Mod Podge, any craft glue, any craft white glue. Mod Podge is a craft white glue. Um, so, I mean, any of those, they're the same thing. They're all the same thing chemically. Um, they may have slight differences depending on what their intended purpose originally was, but in general, white glue, PVA glue is PVA glue is PVA glue. Unless it's uh, the washable kind, which you never want to use uh, for terrain or modeling. I'm just clawing away at this, making it, and again, just like, the more you mess around with it, the more it's going to look less like cork and more it's going to look like a real stone formation. Like this part is really looking real now. Look at that. And it just takes a little time. So it's, it's entirely up to you how much you want to put into it to make your cork not look like cork or if you just don't care. Or if you're going to embrace the fact that it's a temple and maybe you decide that you're going to keep a lot of the flat but you're going to carve, and you could do this with a hobby knife, you're going to put lines, you know, kind of carve little channels in that and make a grid so it's obvious that it's like ruined flagstones underneath this statue. We could have gone that way as well. Um, but I, I kind of wanted this to be way ruined, like everything is breaking down. Kind of like in Lord of the Rings to, toward the end where those big statues just sticking out of the dirt. 
um, Fellowship of the Ring, I should have specified. So I'm going to go in and uh, claw up a bunch of this stuff now. I'm also going to break away more of the underneath now that I know where the base lip is. I can claw away at it because I know where to stop because I'm, I'm glued down, right? And this is like, I like this, this following roughly the edge, but it does look organic. And let's see here. I think I want to claw away a bit here. I'm going to build up a bunch of debris here. So let's grab our little porklets. Put some nice, uh, nice glue bead. The thing about, um, I wonder if I get, if it, is my spout working today? Yeah, it is. All right. So we can use the snozzle too to more precisely place our super glue. Put a nice bead all around the edge. And then we grab our cork. Sprinkle, sprinkle, just like any basing material. Tap it. When you're tapping it, it's going to kind of settle down and the big pieces are going to fall off and little pieces are going to stay in place and everything's going to compact a little. Cork a little less so than other materials, so that's why I do go in with my knife still and play around with it. Um, get that off of there. And try to make it look... I'll try to place things sometimes if I'm like, I, I want a little closer to the edge or I want some overlap. And here is also where if you pull your glue down, you can take some of this debris down here and that disguises that there's an edge here. So if you did a lot of this moving around the uh, model, you could very convincingly disguise your edge because you're interrupting it. You're putting a stone there that projects down into this area and up above it. And that uh, will create the appearance uh, the illusion that there is in fact not a flat edge there. So putting all of this all around here and having it both interrupt her, so we're hiding this edge, right, with putting all this um, this cork gravel around it. So we're hiding this edge and we're hiding the fact we're trying to break the wall here and uh, make it mo even more natural looking. So snozzle is a funny word, but that's why I use it. Just like dog snouts are actually snoodles, and when they when they nose you, they're snoodling you. Just in case you didn't know, that's a that's an important part of uh, dog vocabulary, I believe. Kiri Snoot was a champion snoodler, my old dog. She would come up and snoodle you under the elbow when you were like trying to do a really high level dungeon or something, and you know, or about to like win a map in Overwatch, and then she'd snoodle you, and you would. Your aim would go haywire, and then people would kill you, and you'd, you'd lose. Like that was that was Kiri. Kiri's like, how dare you pay attention to that video game instead of me? I will snoodle you and destroy your chances. But yes, yeah, so that's that's what I believe anyway. The puppy is not big enough to snoodle yet, but I'm sure she's going to start since she's going to be pretty tall when she's grown. I'm already like thanking the gods that, that she's short right now, so we can still keep things out of her range. All right, so once again, let's mess up the bottom here, make it look real craggy and rocky. There we go, that's a good one. Nice shelf of rock. Real jagged. I like this. This is a good shape. And we're also making, of course, more, more grit so that we can uh, continue to play with our, our, um, our debris up top here on the top part. There. So I'm pulling away all of that there, and I'll pop some debris in right under this rock. I may actually use one of my biggest piece, bigger pieces of rock. Let me see if I got something that'll work. Maybe this. Yeah. So whenever you can put a rock up and see how, have it extend down in this area, but also break this line and even break the line onto the base there. 
So this is a good piece. I'm gonna just super glue it in place by just dropping a drop onto it. And again, capillary action is going to um, slurp, technical term, slurp that into there uh, and glue it on. And then, ah! See, it stayed. Amazing, isn't it? Super glue, huzzah! Um, hi, Anora, <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm highly entertaining or not very today. I haven't decided. <laughs> yes, because of you, you little furry fiend. I desperately need a nap today. Like when the puppy is, when, we, when we're post lunch and like it's nap time, like I'm nap time too. I need to have brain cells by the time I attend my dog, dog uh, training orientation tonight. Let's see, I want to throw another little little bit of uh, rock, quote unquote, into here. So I grabbed another piece. Yeah, last night was just like, for some reason, I just feel like I did not get great sleep. You know, you just you feel sluggish, sluggish the next morning. I'm fighting it. All right, so that's mostly stuck down, but I need more over here. So you can use your sculpting tool to just kind of grab these little bits and uh, bring them in from little to bigger. And then usually, honestly, I just drop a big blob of super glue on there and it'll build it together. It'll, and again, you can use white glue. It just is gonna take a, a longer time to cure. There. So all of this work that we're doing, we're interrupting all the edges, right? We're, we're disguising the edge where the plastic comes down. We're disguising this hard edge that's the top of the cork. Um, and we're uh, making some of these big pieces extend past all these edges. And that's how you get a base that is made of cork that does not look at all like cork when you've painted it and added stuff. Oh, I know this morning was terrible, Quindy. I, I woke up at like 5.45 a.m. And like I could have slept till 7, but I just couldn't get back to sleep. Ugh. That's why it's going to be nap time later, which is the good thing about being like self-employed and like having a flexible schedule is that I can switch up my schedule a little bit to get more things like things done like earlier or later and get a nap in if I really need one. So this I think looks really good right now. Um, we've got just a little bit of flat, but leaving tiny pieces of flat is useful because that's where we can throw on our vegetation. So. It's not that you have to like totally kill all of the flat area. You want little bits of flatness that you can place grass or vegetation onto. And then that ends up looking really good. Yeah, I like this. Okay, so we've still got a little bit of an edge here that we have not disguised and I could just put grass over that. I may, I may indeed, because I have a little bit of flatness here. Um, and so that'll probably be easily disguisable with some grass clinging to the side of the stones. I really like this outcropping here and this all feels very like natural stone to me. So I like that a lot. Um, gonna, gonna claw away a little bit of this, I think, cause I don't want necessarily some grass out here. So I want to disguise the flatness just a little. What's funny is this is going to go in the Reaper gallery and nobody's ever going to look at it after that. <laughs> no one will care, but that's okay. We I care. So, this area has become saturated with super glue. You can see the, the darkness. And this is going to actually hamper my ability to claw away at it. Um, this part is a little bit softer toward the outer edge, but the inside edge there ain't moving. And that's the downside of the super glue is it will make it more brittle, but also makes it really hard. And so if I wanna disrupt it, I have to push a lot harder at it. Um, and it may not be as easy for me to shape. So that's looking okay. <laughs> Thanks, Quindy. Thanks. You make me feel better. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, this is a statue, so you'd expect it to be smooth, whereas I want debris. And I am build, building up some cork in the debris. So I don't think that the statue being different from the groundwork is a problem at all. I think it just draws more attention to the fact that this is a fallen statue. Um, so if it wasn't a statue, then I would probably be doing slightly different things. Yeah, see her? There's her, her, her cloth, shoulder, and her face. 
so yeah so if i were um if i wanted this to be the same kind of finish of stone i would be taking some glue uh, or like watered down milliput or watered down aves and i would be smoothing out the rocks by putting a slurry of that sort of thing over the top um, putting a thick layer of white glue over this stuff after it's cured will fill in your cracks and gaps and it will smooth out texture and it's a fairly easy fix you could also use gloss medium although then you've got to you know you got to prime it and paint it afterwards and hopefully your primer sticks to it it's a problem with some glosses that are really hard and thick um, is that paint adhesion can be a problem so you could mask the wyvern off and do a spray primer over a gloss sealer though a gloss medium there's always ways it's just how much of a pain in the butt is it going to be uh, but yeah, since we do have an actual statue here, like these stones back here, I could probably get away with the same sort of thing because I can say, oh, it's just another part of the statue that fell down, right? Um, but I could also choose to build up a lot of stones, quote unquote stones, a lot of cork stone over the top um, here so I can disguise. And then you really can't see what these pieces are. You have to assume they're part of the, stat the statue. All right, so let's do another. Speaking of that, I need a glob of glue here, coming up here and down here. So we are disguising a little bit of Julie's lovely sculpt, but just a little bit and in the name of uh, erosion. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sprinkle that in. Then I'm gonna take my sculpting tool and guide my little cork bits that got errant uh, out of the way here. And for some of these little shards that are really sharp, either I might pull them off or I might put a little bit of actual gravel over the top to fill in a little bit of sand uh, to fill in some of that. Because some of these work and some of these are a little bit too big. And again, I can also do uh, vegetation. I have many options for disguising. Uh, what I've done and making it look different. So, for example, if I really want to, hold on, let me move everything over here. One way to do this would be to use my um, my sand and gravel. Uh oh, I dropped my moss. Curses! Don't eat the moss, puppy. I have dropped a giant chunk of moss on the floor. Happily, she's asleep. There we go. Giant chunk of moss. So we can use our gravel. I can use my little tiny gravel scoop that I made last time, remember? Oh, yep. Have fun in our uh, Sorry, I won't be there this year. David will, David will uh, represent the household. You can ask him for his puppy horror stories. He'll be like, and could tell you. All right, so here, what I can do is I can sprinkle a bunch of actual gravel in. See? Now there's still wet super glue in there. But I can also put a, uh, hold on while I put my scoop back. But I can also do the same thing that I did before and drop a drop of super glue in here, which will make everything ball together. And it will essentially use capillary action to soak in. And it will dry quite hard. This is a lot of super glue. Definitely have good ventilation. I have an open window, I have two fans. Yeah, yeah, but I have a, I have a puppy to wrangle, Max. <laughs> This is why I use the sculpting tool, Quindy. That way I don't ruin a brush. I just ruin, you know, a sculpting tool, which I've got th like three spades, I think. Except actually I can use, um, I can use my knife, even if you get, like even though I've gotten a bits of super glue onto this, super, super glue is brittle. And once it's dried, you can absolutely just use a hobby knife to scrape off your tool. 
because your tool is steel, it's much harder than the super glue. So essentially I just take, and I do this if I get green stuff on my tool too, I just take my knife and scrape away until I get it all off. Um, yes, Polly, of course I'm going to paint the cork. Always, always, always paint your basing. Always. Plus, you want to disguise the fact that it's cork. If you don't paint your cork, guess what? Everybody knows it's cork. No matter how much of a cool sculpting thing you do on it, like I'm doing here. Like, it will totally, you will, you will lose it. There. So that made a really nice, uh, kind of a, a landfall, right? A, light, a, a really good gravel rock fall there. <laughs> oh no, I've ruined plenty of tools. This is, a, this is 30 years of experience. <laughs> and plenty of ruined tools along the way. <laughs> if only I could just have had a camera pointed over my shoulder when I was a younger hobbyist and, uh, you know, save all those great bloopers for all you guys. Like when I tried to super glue a five-headed dragon, or use it, use green stuff to put together a five-headed dragon, and then the green stuff like got gloopy and all the heads sagged, because I didn't brace them adequately. I was trying to shortcut it, and I didn't understand how to use green stuff at all. This was back when I was uh, in college, and I had just encountered green stuff. So yeah, so you can see how doing the gravel fall, even though we've covered up part of the face, this is this is very cool. It's going to give us a very uh, very organic feel. Remember the point is to disguise what we are doing. Make it look like it was sculpted this way. And I can I can push up some cork here. There's a little bit of super glue. So then actually push up a little bit of this cork over that edge and disguise it. There. Alright. And we've got that big flap kind of underneath the wing, but I want to tackle all the places that I can kind of like see stuff a little better. I do think I want some gravel back here though. So let's do a bit of graveling. And because I'm focusing on my finer sand mix here, I'm not getting any real big gravel pieces on purpose. All right, so now we've got that placed there. I think I'm gonna keep that all there. And the other thing this is doing is as we pull this gravel up, you can see that I'm getting some sand also over in these little areas. I can uh, throw a, a glob of glue onto that and essentially freeze those there. There we go. Got that set. This is all going to do a nice job of disguising the work that I'm doing. All right, let that set for a second. Sixty is a lot. Sixty is a lot cursed. I would totally put all of them away except for three or five and work on those. If you keep staring at 60, you'll never do it. <laughs> at least that's me. <laughs> yeah, the wings are cool. They're based on a two-dimensional uh, or a 2D art piece. I looked up um, Wyvern and I found more of a, a two two-legged dragon, but that was uh, this was the color scheme on it, so more or less. So I decided to uh, do this. Always look at 2D stuff uh, if you can. Just do some Google image searches and. Uh, Take your, uh, take, I take a lot of inspiration from either nature or just like paintings and other art pieces uh, that I'm like, oh, I could take that and adapt it to X, you know? So 
And yeah, Quindy uh, linked to the uh, linked earlier on to the uh, video for how we painted this over and it's a succession of videos. So I'm just going to let that super glue set and also so because fumes, fumes, lots of fumes. Go away fumes. Like I said, I've got an open window straight ahead of me. I've got two fans back here. Of course, they're for the puppy too, but they also aid in circulation and in ventilation. If you're going to work with super glue this way, you've got to have ventilation. Yeah, I had to, I want this one to go to the Reaper because ReaperCon is this week, uh, Fable Beast. I'm not going, but uh, my fiance is, and I'm sending him with some models. Uh, when I finish models for this stream, uh, a selection of them typically go to Reaper. So I'll send them particular pieces, and I decided that I wanted to send the Wyvern, but he uh, was just on his plastic base, and Ron likes them to be put on, or just his, his integral base, sorry, and Ron likes to be them to be put on a nice um, standard basing, gaming base. So I realized that I had to do basing on him, and as people tend to like basing, uh, yeah, I decided, decided to show how I would disguise this. Um, of course, as I mentioned, also putting that layer of the cork on there also lets the wyvern be up a little higher so you can see him a little better. Because uh, on, normally he'd be crouched very low, but here it, this raises him up a little bit, so he's pretty cool. Rawr. Yeah, every once in a while I do basing stream. Usually I'm doing it at the end of a model. Um, originally I'd, I had kind of decided I didn't want to base the wyvern and I wasn't sure he was going to run. Uh, at Reaper, but then I decided, yeah, I like him enough. He can go and sit in the gallery. Yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, if you look at it at the Wyvern now, because before, before he would have been perched like, let's see. So if we look at where his feet are, you know, he wouldn't be that imposing. But now with the adventurer, now he's much more imposing. So I do like elevating. I like elevating characters that are important because it, it gives you that sense of importance and really raises them up a little bit, makes them look cooler and more imposing. Um, but with monsters, yeah, especially smaller monsters, but that you do want to look a little more, more, little more scary, raising them up a little bit on, on a layer of cork or other kind of filler uh, stuff. I find cork to be easiest, fastest, and cheapest. Um, uh, helps to make them a little bit scarier. Um, Honestly, I would not use cork and super glue to start with. I would use cork and white glue. I've been saying, uh, I think through most of the stream Kodiak, that super glue is not the most ideal material to use with cork, um, fumes and other reasons. But as I am trying to go very quickly on the stream, I'm doing it. <laughs> um, however, white glue, like PVA glue or Elmer's All Purpose, uh, is always good for basing stuff. You can always put a layer of it on after everything is set and it helps to glue everything down and fill in gaps so that then you can paint everything nicely. Um, I honestly start started Kodiak with just sand and gravel. Just start with simple stuff. Start with start with static grass. Uh, either you can buy the static grass or you can get the clumps. The clumps are easy. Um, you'll get the most value from them if you learn how to make them look more natural by grouping them together and, you know, kind of putting them in places where grass would be. Um, but I do think, yeah, have fun, Crowley. But cork, if you're looking at building up, yeah, definitely cork. And I mean, I use, you guys have seen me do several places and you know that most of the time I'm just using either stand, sand and gravel or like texture paste, texture paint or whatever, um, cork, uh, glue of some sort, and vegetation of some sort, right? So like David's got this great moss, but you could use static grass. Um, they make tiny leaf punches, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I need to get this done for Reaper Compendrix, so I decided to disguise the Wyvern base. Um, and yeah, pretty good actually, I like it. So now I've just got this one edge that I need to figure out what I wanna do. I already did carve some channels into it, so maybe I will just do some quick sand and gravel over the top and color done. Yeah, this is, I will not be on tomorrow, Pendrick. Uh, I have to take David to the airport and his flight is uh, timed to such that it is, I have to leave here at 10 a.m. 
So I will be on doing the launch Reapercon stream at uh, 10.30 a.m. Central USA time on uh, Thursday. So y'all who are there at ReaperCon can, uh, can I'll, I'll just be jealous of you. But yeah, but if I was starting with basing, I mean, the way I started with basing was just using a, a sand and gravel mix like this. Because it's so easy. You just put glue down, you sprinkle it, you let it set, and then you tap it to get the excess off, and then you paint it. And you, maybe you put some grass on it. It's so easy. So if you're intimidated by basing, that's the easiest way to start. And then once you start to get, you know, then maybe pick up some cork and start playing around with cork bases. Um, like I said, preferably use white glue. If you're using super glue, then use good ventilation and uh, try to use as little as you can. Yeah, and save all your scraps. Exactly. I mean, that's the simplest way, but that's how I started when I was in college, when I was first um, like getting into a Warhammer and I was playing a lot of role playing games and I wanted, but I wanted basing, I wanted something simple and, and the sand and gravel mix is just, I mean, you can put it together with Woodland Scenic stuff, but that's actually a pre, pre-packaged, I think that's Games Workshop, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, like, um, I'm not Army Painter, uh, Gale Force 9 has a mix as well, I think. Um, and like, and like I said, you could even, if you're using a lot of cork, save your really small bits because those can be very useful. I'm going to do a bit of sand and stuff over here. So let's disguise the edge here. I'm going to get my little scoop. And I made this little scoop just from some cardstock. It just lets me uh, be more precise about where I put my glue. I need a little bit more over there, kind of here. And then I also always work over a piece of paper, and that's this. Um, it's really easy in that case to just grab the paper and tilt the uh, stuff back into the container when I'm done. And usually for larger cork chunks, where I've got my, my collection of larger chunks over here, um, I'll just keep these in a Ziploc baggie keep them at hand in case I need them to make chunks of rock for different bases. Yeah, as you do, I mean, as you as you uh, progress in the hobby and as you uh, gain things over the years, you end up with quite the collection because you'll get a big bag of some basing stuff and then you'll realize it's going to take you your entire lifetime to work through that one bag. So you begin foisting it off on friends. <laughs> so... I put the glue, I put the uh, the gravel over everything, including my uh, my kind of chunked out um, areas in the base. I'm at my channels, and I'm going to go in there with my sculpting tool again, and kind of get some of that gravel out of there, so I can keep keep a little bit of that irregularity. And I'm going to keep these little uh, flat areas again for vegetation and uh, grass and stuff. But yeah, but if you were just starting out, as Cody I, I think said they were. Um, then the most easy way to start is with sand and gravel. Get some white glue, get some static grass, either the clumps or just the loose grass. Loose grass, I find, does uh, benefit from utilizing super glue. A lot of people use just white glue with it, but I find that very, uh, very unsatisfying. Um, I think the super glue makes it stand up a little bit better. Yeah. And the great thing about my uh, my gravel scoop is it also uh, makes a good gravel corraler after I get it all over my work surface. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's already 11.03. Wow, the day flies when you have no brain cells. The stupid thing is, we went to bed early, so I, th I would think my brain would be a little bit better. Must have really woken up like in the middle of like a dream cycle or something, like you do. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just the ballast. I mean, the railroad ballast is uh, Woodland Scenic sells a whole bunch of different sizes. It's a good way to make your own sand and gravel if you want the fine sand. Yep. 
then just get the the painting sand, which is all, usually a very fine sand grade. Good good uh, advice there from Pendrake. All right, so that has been a quick quick disguise of what we've been doing. I'm going to rip this up just a little bit and pop it up. There's super glue right there, so if I can just elevate a little piece of this, I don't even need to uh, to rip it off. I just need to kind of separate it out and make it break that line again so that it looks natural. And then I probably could grab my scoop and do just a little extra bit of sand there because I see a little bit of extra glue. There. There we go. Yay. So I'll let it set, and then I'll kind of like what you what you saw me uh, do there. What I'm taking it off, I'm going to tilt it to the side. I'm going to tap it to make sure that any loose gravel goes off of it. Um, while I'm waiting for everything, I'm just going to look at my bottom edge here and assess how I've done. It looks pretty irregular. I don't think I left any real flat areas. Some of my gravel's gotten down onto this area, and that's absolutely cool. Just make sure it's not like sticking onto the black base itself, which it shouldn't be. There hasn't been any glue there, unless you fingerprinted uh, a little bit there. But yeah, so that is good. Thanks, Bryce. Are you going to ReaperCon, Bryce? Gravel Corraler. I, I can only say it on No Sleep, Quindy. <laughs> Yeah, if it's basing glue and it's white, it's a PVA glue. Yeah, whatever works, Agent Marvel. Um, I own Sculpt and Mold, Mr. Uh, Mr. ID, um, but I uh, actually haven't played with it. Like, I got it very recently when I was looking at some, uh, both the AK scenery book and also some um, model railroading sites. Uh, and I saw they were advising, like, they were saying it was really uh, interesting and fun to work with. So I actually have a, have a have a bunch of sculpt mold actually in my closet waiting for me to have brain cells to play with. So I'm really looking forward to having fun with that. Um, it does not strike me as being a great micro tool, but for making large, like I want to use it with some, um, some rock molds to make like some bigger stones and stuff to work this off of. Oh yeah, David, uh, yeah, Doggo definitely needs mom at home and needs to cost her all the sleep. Uh, David, um, I'm taking David to the airport tomorrow at 10 a.m., so I won't be streaming. I'll be skipping stream tomorrow, and I'm doing the the kickoff ReaperCon stream on Thursday at 10 a.m. USA Central Time. So, yeah. So, yeah, David's flying out a little later. He'll get to ReaperCon a little bit later. All righty. Woo! But, yeah, Doggo needs some, some structure, and uh, poor Doggo. <laughs> She's like, it's so hard being a puppy. She's crashed right now. I see your eyes blinking. She's awake. She's just like listening to me. She's being a good girl. She's very good during streams. Like, really. As you guys can tell, she's absolutely quiet. She hasn't been disruptive. She's really, really good. Oh, you're right, Pendrake. Um, well, it's actually we're leaving 10 a.m. SFO time. Like, that's why, because that's why I can't stream. Because normally I stream at 9.30 a.m. my time. But I'll be leaving to take David to the airport at 10 o'clock my time, which would be when you guys are usually watching the stream. So, yeah. Oh, she is, yep. Well, she was, like, last, like I said, like, uh, not last night, but the night before. She was, like, totally woke us up at 3.30 and 5.30. Like, David actually got up at 5.30 and went and slept in the guest bedroom to make sure that he could get more sleep. I was like, oops. <laughs> Are we still getting married? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of really bummed that the puppy cam hasn't worked. Like, I don't know what exactly is going on with that, but I'm kind of bummed. I don't know. Maybe I'll go with Justin and ask him if he can help me troubleshoot. And David's going to help me troubleshoot, but it won't be until after ReaperCon, so... Yeah, I know. I keep thinking, is does he still want to marry me after this? 
<laughs> I'm the one who wanted this puppy. <laughs> when she's being good, she's an angel. It's just, you know, it's 30% alligator, 65% sleeping, 5% angel. Thursday start time. Um, it's going to actually be uh, at 8.30 my time, 10.30 your time. 10.30 Denton time, sorry. Sorry, I've got, my, my brain is tired enough that it is not able to do time zones right now. It's just like, nope. <laughs> it's 10.30 Denton time. I, it was 10, but I can't do that. I have to, I can get her up at 7 and probably have her time to, because the thing is that she has to be wound, wound down by the time I start the stream. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to get up super early for it. So I'm getting little enough sleep. It's been a long time since I had a baby puppy. I had forgotten. That's why I wanted one so bad. <laughs> you, you forget. And then you're like, I really want a puppy. And then you get the puppy and you're like, oh no. <laughs> so yes, 1030 Thursday, ReaperCon kickoff stream by yours truly. We will be working on this model and I will be uh, working on getting at least a, a, probably a Zenith and a base, kind of a base. Uh, I want to do a really moody, moody and blues and, and teals, I think. Good test. Yeah, right. Well, first it was the pandemic, Bryce. I mean, we started, like, we dated, you know, and then I moved in with him over the end of the pandemic, right, right when the pandemic hit. So we had to actually live together, live together big time. And that, that worked. We managed that one. But the puppy might be the death, the death of the relationship. <laughs> But yeah, so I want to do some really yeah, moody blues and, and pale aquas on her, I think. Maybe some yellows, but I haven't decided. Something something kind of ghosty, spirity, dark, shadowy. Kind of, you know, she's a ghost walker, whatever that means. I don't know what it means, so I'm just going to paint her with my interior idea of uh, what color I want her to be. So, and it's a color scheme we haven't done, actually. So, and probably white hair, I'm thinking. Probably white hair... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff like that. Normally, Pendrake, I can do it in my head. Today, I cannot do it in my head. Puppy, puppy brain has, uh, I was exhausted last night. I'm still exhausted this morning. It's not good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's fantastic. Like, I actually um, told, showed David all the good ones from the swag box so that he can get copies when he's at ReaperCon. Yep, bye, Agent Marvel. I don't want that. I don't know. I want the rest of her to be blue, Pendrake. I have a strong concept for this one, so I'll pretty much I'm just going to ignore anybody trying to give me advice on it. <laughs> like, when I don't have a strong concept for a model, you guys, I ask you guys a lot. But now, no, I know how I want to paint her, so I'm just going to do it. Um... But yeah, maybe might go. We'll see. I probably will go fair with the skin, though. We'll see. I do want, though, a little spot of warmth. And so the giving her, like, a fairer skin tone would be good. Uh, super weird long names for Derek to read. <laughs> um, Mr. IDEJ, I... Uh, I'm, I'm very used to this breed, actually. I, I've raised four of them, all of those uh, four with very different energy levels and, uh, and temperaments. So this is my fifth Shiloh Shepherd, and uh, I, I, yeah, she's got an off switch. I mean, she's doing really good right now, and then during the afternoon, she usually conks for a couple hours at a time. Um, so I get, you know, time to work and time to nap and time to whatever. I need a nap today. Usually yesterday, it was like, yeah, I have time to work. Uh, today, is I desperately need more sleep. Oh, I see. Well, then I'll just ignore you, Pedrick. <laughs> Except that I think I've used at least once of your wacky outside of the box uh, suggestions. Yes, totally what Proctor would do. But you know what? Derek's going to have fun with that. So, But yes, my puppy does have an off switch. She's actually really good. Like yesterday, all during the day, she was actually really, really good. Um, we're just, her crate, her bedtime crates, like I just ordered a new crate for her because she's growing so fast. 
So I feel like once we get the 36 inch crate in there, she'll be a much happier, more comfortable puppy at night and uh, should be okay. <laughs> That's okay. I expect Proctor to do that. I would expect, I would, I mean, he says that even when I'm doing it, he tells everybody, but you guys already know, like you guys already try to prank me with your miniatures names for the award ceremony. So, so yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it there because I, I'm waiting for everything to set because as Quindy mentioned, if you start painting too soon, the super glue can lull you into a false sense of security. You will start painting and then your brush will find a puddle of uncured super glue and your brush will die a horrible screaming death um, with tufts, tufts of it stuck together. Um, so you definitely want to give uh, this a few hours to kind of sit um, and then do your painting, but it'll be very easy. <laughs> But yes, exactly. The, the brush, brush death of doom. So the cool thing about the little cork pieces too is that they are very like um, the rocks and the gravel. So I can just toss this into my gravel and the cork bits will just become extra rocks. Very much like every other little rock in here, except they're cork. <clears throat> yes, yes. So, so we will let Mr. Wyvern, so here, let's just do one more panning shot see how we've built up our finer sand going up into parts of the statue and uh, just disguising the edge around here so that when we come into paint um, we're good and then we can use uh, depending on it I kind of always imagine this um, this uh, wyvern is kind of a desert critter critter so I'll probably use I think I used the stone gray for this model uh, for the statue or something similar and uh, I will work with uh, stone gray or wolf gray. It was one of the one of the two. It may have been wolf gray. Wolf gray with some like black indigo shadows, um, and I'll work with that uh, integrating different parts of this. And I'll probably also uh, work with some browns just uh, around the the dirt line around the statue to uh, make it a little bit less monotone because you don't want to just do it all the same stone color. You want to especially because the, the statue itself could be a slightly different stone than the surrounding area. So. So think about that. Think about like how, what kind of area this is, if this is the same stone or not, and how you're going to vary it up. Use different colors. Use some browns and oranges, um, some dark browns and some light browns, uh, some cream colors and a bunch of grays and even some, a little bit of blue gray um, and some greens. If you want to introduce, if, if it's a moist environment, use dark greens, kind of put those in the cracks around things and, and where the stones go up against the statue to imply greenery and life on a micro level that you just can't see texture. Um, and uh, if you utilize all that stuff and pop some, pop some cool stuff on there, like some, some mosses or some, these are just so cool. These make such cool little plants. Like they're just great. I love these mosses. David's got a whole bucket of it. I'm going to totally steal it all. He's going to be like, where's my bucket of moss? And I'm going to be like, I made it all. I made it all into things. All right, you guys. That's about right. Any questions other than I won't be on tomorrow. I will be on Thursday at a uh, 1030 start time uh, for ReaperCon. Roar. Roar, says the women. Roar. Watch the show on Thursday, everybody. Everybody's like, Anne is funny when she's overtired. Yes. <laughs> it's nice to see you too. Thanks, Lusana. I'm glad you, uh, glad you enjoyed it. Alrighty. And good luck with your puppy also. Good luck for both of us. I got to wake mine up now. You'll be stuck at work cursed. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Thank you all. I'll be using the um, wet palette that came in the, uh, I think I will be anyway. Um, for Thursday's uh, stream as well. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks much, and uh, I hope that I will see you all, or many of you, on Thursday. All right. Have a great one. And Bryce, enjoy your ReaperCon. Everybody else, enjoy your ReaperCon, whoever's going. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>